Sitting in the midst of doctors and lawyers was a lad. He answered with great wisdom all the questions that they had. They were amazed when they inquired about his age when he replied, On my mother's side, I'm 12 years old, but on my father's side, I am the ancient of days, the maker of all men. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I am the rock of ages, the blessed bread of life. And I am the reigning king of kings on my father's side. On my mother's side, I look like any ordinary man. But in heaven on my father's side, all power's in my hand. In all points I've been tempted without a choice of sin. Destroy this temple in just three days, I'll raise it up again. I am the ancient of days, the maker of all men. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I am the rock of ages, the blessed bread of life. And I am the reigning king of kings on my father's side. I am the ancient of days, the maker of all men. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I am the rock of ages, the blessed bread of life. And I am the reigning king of kings on my father's side. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. If you want to turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 15, no doubt a very familiar text, but I'm glad to be able to be here. This is our first time here. I, I actually drove by this church once. A few years ago, we were, my wife and I were, on a little vacation, we were staying up there at the lighthouse, and uh, we drove down through here, went to Benton, and uh, I, matter of fact, I got a, I got a friend, I, I probably should say had a friend down here in Benton, Brother Larry Logston, uh, pastor's New Testament Baptist Church there, really fair dealing, and he just passed away Saturday, so pray for that family and pray for that church. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do, to be honest with you, and uh, just a small just a small church, and my brother Logs and a faithful man, been there 40 or 41 years, and uh, that, that's a blessing, amen. But anyways, glad to be able to be here, and thank the Lord for his blessings. Let me mention one more thing before I look at my text, and, and I'll be real quick about it. Uh, brother Otto was telling Brother Smith there that our church has a radio station, Madisonville, Kentucky, 89.9 FM, and uh, we're actually... Tomorrow, we're putting up an antenna between Mary and, and uh, uh, what's that for the Mayfield, between Mary and Mayfield in Coldwater, Con uh, Tennessee, amen. Uh, Coldwater, Kentucky, I'm sorry, Coldwater, Kentucky, a little area there. It's going to be licensed to Mary, and uh, so we'll be putting that antenna up tomorrow. Hopefully, we will be on the air by, this, by dark tomorrow, amen. <laughs> be a blessing, and so the Lord blessed us to be able, uh, several years ago, we bought a station down in McKenzie, Tennessee, and from Madisonville to McKenzie, we had a dead spot, you know, through this area. And we were praying about the Lord helping us to get something. We found out about an open door that was going to be last year. And we applied. They told us to apply for three with hopes of getting one. And we got all three. Praise the Lord. Amen. And as far as I know, uh, well, I do know we're the only people in western Kentucky to get the three they asked for. We're the only people. And that's the grace of God. Amen. And uh, may be the only people in the, you know, uh, in the whole area. I'm not sure, but I know in the western Kentucky area, we're the only ones that did. And so we're rejoicing about that. We were able to get Harrisburg, Illinois, on the air in February. And we ordered our antennas in February. They said we was first in line. And we got one of the antennas, the one we're going to be putting up in Mary. Uh, we got that back about a month or so ago. Been waiting on climbers. We're supposed to get our next antenna for Katie's, Kentucky. We're supposed to be getting that next week. Praise God. Amen. And we've had all kinds of situations with that. When we priced the, the antenna in Katie's, they priced it at $15,000. And that's about average. That's, that's about what we paid for the one in Murray. And, but it's a directional antenna. Katie's is directional. And so when we got all the specs together and sent it to them, after about two months, they sent us an updated, uh, <laughs> upgraded, up everything uh, estimate. It went from $15,000 to $33,000. That's a little bit of an increase. 
And uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'd call that inflation. I know our president wouldn't, but that's inflation. Amen. But anyway, uh, but I said, we can't pay that. And so long story short, we found another company that is com compatible and comparable. We ordered from them. They said they could have it ready the same day and for less than $10,000. Praise God. Amen. And so we're looking forward to that. All right. Uh, Luke chapter number 15. And by the way, we're just trying to reach sinners. That's our goal. Reach out with more and even helping shut-ins with, with the truth of God and the Word of God. But at, uh, Luke 15 deals with the story we know as the prodigal son. And we know a lot of prodigal sons. Matter of fact, many of us have a prodigal son. And we know the importance of, of reaching them. I want to look at this text this morning and think uh, on some things in this. Verse number 11 is where the scripture starts. And uh, the Bible says, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered together gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. and He began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said... How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Now the elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, and heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said, the servant said, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his, to his father, Lo, this many, or these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou, gave, thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. I underlined that phrase and wrote in the margin of my Bible, wrong friends. I, it's better to have a brother than a friend. Better to have a father than a friend. Amen. But as soon as this son, or this thy son, <laughs> this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. That in the scripture there, let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege to be here. Thank you for safety traveling down the road, keeping us from the deer and the, and the vehicles and all that. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. Thank you, Lord, that my wife was able to come with me. And I know today she's celebrating her spiritual birthday. Lord, I thank you that I've got a, a good wife and a saved wife. And Lord, I'm thankful to be able to be in the house of God on this Monday morning in a preacher's fellowship. I want to thank you for preachers, and I want to thank you for fellowship. Lord, I pray you'd help us that we'd give you the glory and honor you deserve. Lord, it's not just for preachers, it's for the other members and other people as well. I pray that you'd bless them, and Lord, you'd meet in our presence, and you'd get glory. We ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. I want to preach this morning on this thought, servants are remembered. Servants are remembered. When I, some years ago, matter of fact, the first sermon I preached as pastor of the Island Ford Baptist Church in Madisonville was eight years ago next Sunday. And I preached from this text. I preached on this thought. And I actually titled the message that day, Don't Forget the Servants. But I, I'm thinking about for our sake, servants are remembered. 
I'm glad to be a child of God. I'm glad to be a son of God. Sometimes I'm the elder son. Sometimes I'm the younger son. Amen. Amen. And I, I'm, I'm, and I know you understand this. We're not talking about a license to sin, and we're not trying to throw shade on people that do wrong. But sometimes we get out of gear. And I'm glad the Father has compassion on us, just as He did this Son. And then the elder Son. Sometimes we're serving God, and we get a little bit pharisaical in that service. And we think, as Brother Otto said, we think we're the only ones, and that everybody else is out there, quote unquote, enjoying their sin, and in quote unquote enjoy in their life and we almost act like that it's a it's a drudgery to serve our God this younger son when he got right with God he remembered the servants in his father's house and he said you know it'd be an honor just to be a servant in my father's house amen I got to thinking about that and, and I'm convinced a lot of times there's people that sit in our pews they never venture out into the uh, into the hog pen of sin, so to speak, but they don't recognize the joy and the privilege of being a servant in the Father's house. And so I, as I thought about that, I thought, first of all, the servants were present at the son's return. You see that in our text? This son remembered uh, that his father had servants, and uh, when he got to the Father's house, there they were. Amen. Amen. He starts off in his memory as he came to himself in verse 17. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants? Now, it wasn't that he just remembered his father, but he remembered the servants of his father. Amen. And our job as servants of the father is not to produce a memory of ourselves, but to point to the father. But as we do that, we're making an impression on people. The only God they'll ever come to understand is the one we represent, the way we represent that God. Amen. And so I want to be a faithful servant, faithfully representing my father. Amen. But he said, how many hired servants of my father had bread enough and to spare, and I perished with hunger. He remembered some servants that were happy in the father's house. He remembered some servants that were pleased in the father's house. Some servants that were satisfied in the father's house. Amen. And so he said, I'm going back. And when he went back, look at verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I've sinned in thy sight, and I'm no more, I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants. So the father's there, and he's by his son's side, but apparently by the father's side, those servants are there. Amen. They're right there. When I, when I picture this father and the reunion with his son, normally I had thought about this as a solitary man, meeting a solitary son, but it looks like these servants are there. When the father ran, I believe the servants got excited. Amen. Amen. And just, uh, just as a side, we, <laughs> excuse me, we had a young man come forward last night to give his testimony of salvation, 13 years old. I would say little Logan, that Logan Rickard, just a little. He's, he's actually Brother Hall that was the pastor there before me, and Brother Hall's in, in Springfield now. His wife just got out of the hospital Saturday. But this, Brother Hall's, this is Brother Hall's oldest great-grandchild just got saved last Friday. Amen. He didn't get saved in the church. He got saved down in a creek bed in the woods. Amen. Amen. Just went down there to pray on his own and called on the Lord and got saved. God's been dealing with him for a while. But Logan came forward and gave that testimony. You know what that did? That excites the servants of the Lord. Amen. And we get excited about that. And so I, I see this uh, as he turned to these Servants, and he said unto them, Bring hither the, the best robe and all that, all that that's there. Listen, I'm telling you, one of the blessings we have is to see those children brought unto the Lord, those that are saved by the grace of God. We get to see those sinners that have been, maybe they've wasted their life and they've wasted their substance and all that. And we get to see them come, and we have the privilege of helping them put the robes on and helping them put the rings on and helping them put the shoes on and helping them to feast from the things of God. Amen. I thank God the servants are remembered. Amen. Then not only were they there at the return, but they were there to be a party of the Father's rejoicing. Verse 22, But the Father said, unto, said to the servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and bring a ring and uh, 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 put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Not just us, just not me and the boy. 
And the whole house is going to celebrate. Amen. We're all going to rejoice in this. When that elder son's out in the field, he hears rejoicing. You know who, who he hears rejoicing? Not just dad and the boy. The servants rejoicing as they're enjoying the blessings of the Lord. Brother Alfred Willis said about that, uh, bring hither all these things. He said, when the, father, when the son come home, the father ringed him and robed him and rebocked him and took him to Ryan's. Amen. <laughs> Fed him steak. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I'm glad we can rejoice as servants of the Lord in the good things of God. Amen. Amen. I know that pastor's not all rejoicing. <laughs> Amen. Uh, matter of fact, the same time that young man was down in the woods praying, we had a, a widow lady that got sort of out of gear with some of us. She was sending texts to people and saying, take me off the church Facebook page, take me off of the group. I don't want to be a part of that. And I, all these different things. And uh, my wife sent me a text and said, what do you do? I said, just leave her alone. She's hurting and she'll... She'll get over it. She'll be all right. By the way, she came by to shake that young man's hand last night and hug his neck, and she was just rejoicing and weeping. She, she, she didn't comment on what she had done, but she, she got to enjoy the blessings. Amen. And, but here's my point is this. When God's working, a lot of times the devil is too. But we've got to remember when the devil's working, God is too. Amen. And God's in control of it all, and we can rejoice in those things. And so there's the blessing that we can be there when the son returns. There's a blessing we can be there in the rejoicing between the father and the son. And what a blessing it is to see homes put back together. Amen. What a blessing it is to see members that have gotten out of gear get back in gear and things get made right. Amen. I'll give you one other, just a personal story, side note, and I'll get to my last point on this. But several years ago, I pastored in North Carolina for 26 years before I came out here that only one, one other church I've ever pastored. Actually, my dad started that church when I was 13 years old. He pastored it for 10 years, and I was there for those 26. And there was, there was a young man in the church that was actually my first cousin, got out of gear. And when we'd say, for example, we'd say, all stand, he would refuse to stand. And it was, it was a very obvious refusal. It was not just that he couldn't stand or, or didn't feel like standing. It was, he was making a point. And he would even lay his head over on the pew in front of him sometimes trying to make a scene and all, several different things that was going on. And one day one of, his, one of his children said to the Sunday school teacher, said, I hate this church like my daddy hates this church. Well, he didn't come up with that on his own. And so eventually I had to go talk to him. And I went to him one-on-one -on -one and talked with him. And then I, I took a deacon, a couple of fellows with me, to go talk to him the second time. And I said to him, I said, Martin, we do not want to exclude you from church. We want things to be worked out. But you know what the next step is if you don't get right? And so rather than make another scene or whatever, he just, he just left. He left and went to another church across town. And I don't know, maybe it's maybe it six months later, I was at a family reunion down in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I pulled into the parking lot and I saw Martin. He saw me. He comes running to me. And I didn't know what he's going to do, brother. Now, I'm a pretty good-sized fellow, but he's bigger than me. And uh, he comes running up to me. Now, when he got close enough that I could see, he was weeping. And when he got to me, he just fell on me. And here's what he said. He said, Brother Farrell, I want to thank you for churching me. By, by the way, we didn't church him. He said, I want to thank you for churching me. He said, I never would have got saved if I hadn't seen how bad I was. That's what he said. He'd called on the Lord and gotten saved at that other church. I praise God for that. It don't always work out that way, but thank God for the times it does. Amen. And as servants, we get to be a part of that. Amen. So there's, we get to be a part of the return. We get to be a part of the rejoicing. And then there's the part of the reunion. Amen. They, they were probed about the reunion. They're, this elder son comes in and says, What's going on at the house of God? Amen. Boy, isn't it a blessing when somebody hears word that something's going on down at the house of God? And we're the ones that get probed about it. What's happening down there? What's God doing at the church? Amen. Who did this or who, who did that? I remember when I was a boy. When I was a boy, my grandfather came to live with us. My grandmother died. And my grandfather, he died when he was 93. And uh, he was an... He was an older man. I, I say this all the time. He was 52 years old when my mama was born. So he was an old man when I got to know him. And Grandpa came to live with us, and he was actually a charter member of the church my dad started there. 
But he got to the point he wasn't able to go. And when we'd come home on Sunday, Grandpa would be waiting at the door. And this is what he'd always say. Every service, Grandpa would say, did anybody get saved? And did anybody get happy? Because my grandpa had an idea that when you went to church, somebody ought to get saved. And somebody ought to get happy. Amen. We ought to have that attitude, haven't we? Amen. And then my last, my last point, I said that was my last. I do have one more point, and that's just in closing. The servants get to be part of the recollection. The servants are remembered when this thing's all said and done. Amen. God bless you, preacher. Thank you, brother.